Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Uh, we are here today to uh, discuss a new project uh, at uh, MCC. Uh, as you might have heard, uh, we are trying to purchase a piece of property uh, in uh, Livermore. Uh, it's actually in Contra Costa County. Uh, it's uh, uh, not too far from uh, San Ramon. And, uh, you know, I'll provide you more information on the location and so on. So uh, please make dua as we uh, move forward. So as you know, when we purchased uh, this building uh, back in 2010, uh, we were actually renting a facility in, uh, you know, Pleasanton on Quarry Lane. We had signed up a three-year lease, but when this opportunity came up, we decided to purchase the uh, property and uh, sublease, you know, the uh, uh, existing building that we were occupying. So uh, the same way, you know, this opportunity has come up for a really interesting property. And uh, so we uh, would like to discuss it with you and uh, see how we can move forward. So this uh, particular property is uh, over 400 acres, mashallah. Uh, it is, uh, you know, land uh, that is uh, currently zoned for agriculture, but uh, the zoning uh, eventually can be changed. And uh, so we'll talk about some of the, uh, you know, potential uses of the property. The uh, location is uh, uh, quite central. It's about 20 minutes from MCC, uh, 22 minutes from SRVIC, uh, not that far from ICL. And uh, if you're familiar with the uh, Costco in Livermore, it's only about 10 minutes from there. Uh, the property consists of about four, four and 2.8 acres. There are three different parcels and uh, more than 100 acres of the land is flat. Uh, it has uh, two separate houses. Uh, one of them is a farmhouse. And uh, the utilities uh, on the property, uh, you know, there's electricity, of course, and uh, there are several wells on the property and uh, septic tanks. The uh, zoning uh, is currently agriculture and uh, it's under the Williamson Act, for those of you who are familiar. Uh, this is uh, uh, an act that puts some restrictions on the property, um, you know, until we uh, remove the Williamson Act, we will need to have some sort of uh, agriculture use. Um, and, and there are many types of agriculture uses, uh, you know, uh, so we'll have to have those with the property and it is in Contra Costa County. Okay. Sorry. So these are some uh, pictures that uh, show you, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, you know, some of the, uh, locations of the property. Uh, we have a video that uh, I will go through as well. So let me go back. Okay, so I wanted to show you the property boundaries. Uh, this is important. So um, this property is like an island, uh, you know, surrounded by three different, uh, you know, uh, streets. Collier Canyon Road is, is a road that goes up, you know, from Las Positas College. Uh, so it's about four miles from Las Positas College. Uh, so uh, the um, south side of the property is, uh, uh, you know, off of Collier Canyon Road. Uh, the north side is uh, off of Highland Road, you know, which uh, goes up to San Ramon. And then the uh, east side is uh, on Carniel Road. So as you can see, you know, this is an SSR, oops, uh, this is an SSR's parcel map that, that shows, uh, 
you know, uh, the, uh, the three boundaries uh, for the property. So we looked at these pictures already. Um, so uh, let me talk a little bit about why this opportunity is so important for us. Um, as you know, the, the Bay Area Muslim community uh, is uh, growing. Uh, when we started MCC uh, here back in 2006, uh, we only had a few families. Uh, now we're serving, I believe, over 500 families. Uh, throughout the Tri-Valley, and that's uh, conservative. Um, you know, our, our children are growing up, you know, uh, uh, we also have adult children who are now working and then they're having kids. So we need uh, Islamic schools, uh, we need uh, preschools, and uh, we need uh, senior uh, homes uh, as we, you know, as the community expands. Uh, so all of these um, have to be planned. Uh, you know, if we try to do these individually, uh, it's very expensive. As you know, in the Bay Area, properties are extremely expensive. So our vision here is to purchase this large piece of land and over a period of time, inshallah, you know, be able to construct all of the different types of uh, uh, buildings that we, uh, you know, need to have for the Muslim community. Uh, so, it, you know, this uh, property can be the solution, uh, you know, it can be the long-term solution uh, for, for our kids and their kids. Uh, this is a multi-generational opportunity. This is not something where we can start construction right away. Uh, there are some uh, things we could start, uh, you know, based on the current zoning. For example, a preschool is an allowed use. Uh, an event center is also an allowed use. Uh, so some of these uh, can be done right away. But uh, we'll have to change the zoning in order to, for example, have senior living, you know, with medical offices and a K-12 through full-time school and so on. Uh, we can also have, uh, on part of the land, we could have a cemetery. Uh, as you know, the Muslim cemetery in Livermore uh, is rapidly getting filled up, and, uh, you know, we need to plan for the future. So um, this property came on the market a couple of months ago. Uh, we had made an offer on it, you know, with a long-term escrow. Uh, we, we thought that, uh, you know, we would need some time to raise the funds, but that offer got rejected, uh, you know. So uh, back in June, uh, we found out that another buyer had, uh, you know, made an offer with a much shorter uh, escrow period. Uh, so we informed the listing agent that we're still interested in the property and uh, so uh, we found out just uh, you know, a few days ago that the property is back on the market. Uh, and so we uh, made the offer and the sellers uh, said, well, uh, we cannot give you too much time. Uh, you will have to close escrow within 30 days. So that is uh, the challenge we have, um, uh, that uh, we have to uh, collect uh, about 4,050,000 uh, by August uh, 13th. Uh, Alhamdulillah, we've already raised, uh, you know, over a million dollars, you know, out of the 4,050,000. Uh, the remaining amount of uh, almost 5 million, you know, 4.95 million, the seller has agreed to carry back as, a, as, as seller financing uh, with, of course, uh, zero interest. Uh, so, uh, we can pay this loan off over five years uh, with uh, monthly payments of about $16,667, uh, which can be managed by MCC. Um, that's not a large amount for a monthly payment. So this is uh, where we are today. Um, I'm sure everybody has some concerns. Um, I mean, some of the risks uh, here are, um, 
the rezoning can be denied. Um, uh, but of course, we will keep uh, trying to get the rezoning. As you know, a lot of the agriculture land gets, uh, uh, you know, rezoned over time. You know, if you live in Dublin, uh, you should know that most of the land in Dublin used to be agriculture, and over time it has uh, been developed, you know, as residential and commercial for commercial uses. Uh, what we also have planned is to have uh, another location for MCC in Dublin, inshallah. So uh, that, uh, you know, may have to be postponed a little bit, but, uh, you know, in the meantime, we can rent a facility. And uh, so uh, I don't think this purchase will have, a, you know, a long-term impact. The community has grown a lot and inshallah, you know, we'll be able to support uh, the purchase of uh, Dublin property as well. The uh, MCC 2.0 construction, as you know, uh, there are plans, uh, you know, to have some construction outside as well as uh, perhaps, um, you know, have a second level, uh, a second floor uh, at this building. So uh, there are no plans to delay that. We have the funds, you know, to continue with the construction. So the fundraising plan uh, is uh, to have a combination of uh, Harde Hasna uh, of up to five years, uh, but, you know, we will accept uh, Harde Hasna loans uh, from the community for, uh, you know, three years and uh, longer. Uh, our target is to have about 30% of the amount raised as donations and uh, the remaining amount, you know, as uh, Harde Hasna. Uh, the board of uh, trustees and the board of directors are planning to raise about 1.35 million among themselves uh, to show our commitment uh, to this project. So uh, we are asking the community uh, to uh, also come through with uh, donations and Harde Hasna so we can uh, close escrow on this property, inshallah. So uh, raising uh, more than 4 million in 30 days may seem like a, a big challenge, uh, but uh, you know, we have uh, done uh, you know, uh, something similar before. When we were purchasing this particular building, we had about $100,000 in the bank. And uh, the uh, price, the original price on the building was over 7 million. We, had, we negotiated that down to 4050000 $50,000, and uh, we were able to raise, uh, you know, all of the money and get the financing needed uh, to purchase the building. So it can be done again. Inshallah, the community is much larger now, and we're confident that uh, we'll be able to raise all the funds with your uh, help and duas as well. So... Uh, that's all I had for the presentation. I'd like to open it this uh, up for any questions. Uh, I'm sure all of you have a lot of questions. Uh, so um, we can start with that, and then I have a video. Uh, uh, yeah, let's let's go through the video now, and then uh, we can open it up for questions, inshallah. How about we take some questions? Come. We'll take some questions. Sure. So, uh, yeah, while we're uh, fixing the video, uh, any questions? Yeah, go ahead, Mug.
Assalamu alaikum. Um, Jazak Allah khair for walking us through that and may Allah reward everybody involved in this uh, effort. Uh, one question I have is, I know that the need for an Islamic school is, is so, so important right now. And the, um, I know, I think this is a great project and inshallah Allah can make it easy to kind of push through it. Is there a reason we haven't used kind of the current uh, classrooms that we have here in this building for an Islamic school to start right now that could then springboard into this this new facility? Because I think right now, the, you know, I know the, the Muslim cemetery is really important, things like that, but there's not going to be a need for a Muslim cemetery if we don't have Islamic schools, because that's the <laughs> most fundamental thing that we need. Uh, you know, the, the, those things are going to empty out if we don't have Islamic schools as soon as possible. Yes, yes, brother. Jazakallah uh, for that question. Uh, uh, the original MCC charter, uh, you know, required a full-time Islamic school. Uh, we have been looking uh, for facilities uh, where we could have uh, the Islamic school. Uh, the uh, space we have rented uh, to the preschool was uh, also part of our charter to make MCC self-sufficient. We get over $26,000 a month in rent uh, from uh, you know the preschool that the Montessori uh, that's here uh, and uh, those classrooms will not be sufficient you know for a uh, full-time Islamic school uh, you need a lot more space you know that's only about 9,000 uh, plus square feet so uh, yes uh, you know this particular facility like I said uh, this land uh, gives us a lot of uh, you know different options uh, we'll start with a preschool, you know, an Islamic preschool, inshallah, and then we'll, we'll try to build it up to an elementary and then uh, middle school and so on. So uh, please make dua that inshallah we'll be able to get, you know, approval on all, all the uses. I mean, inshallah. Okay. I think uh, the brother next to you has a question. Oh, as alaikum. Um, I know you mentioned uh, the zoning issue, inshallah, that will be solved, uh, but... Uh, okay. All right. Thank you. Um, another challenge usually is uh, with these kind of uh, religious um, um, buildings or area is the use permit. So mm -hmm. have you thought about it or can you please let us know how well, that challenge would be solved or resolved? Yeah. Uh, so, you know, we have, mashallah, people in the community uh, who are in construction, uh, you know, I've also done land development. I'm a commercial broker. Uh, and so uh, we have talked to uh, Contra Costa County already, you know, the planning department. And they've given us a list of uh, uses uh, that uh, we can apply for right away. Uh, and uh, over a period of time, uh, you know, uh, we will work with them. So the way it, uh, you know, the uh, use permit uh, works is you first have to uh, define exactly what you want to build. And then, uh, you know, you, you go to the planning department in the, uh, this uh, land is in the county. So we'll be working with the planning department at Contra Costa County. And they will uh, tell us exactly what is needed. Uh, and uh, once we work with the staff and, uh, you know, th there will be a hearing. Uh, there's a public hearing for, to get the approval. Uh, with the county, you have, uh, you know, the supervisors who do the approval. So once that is done, uh, then, uh, you know, we can start construction. So we know the whole process and uh, inshallah we'll be working, uh, you know, uh, continuously on uh, getting all, all of the different types of uses, uh, you know, that the community needs. Hello. Yeah. Uh, no worries. Yeah. So a couple of years back, I had I had gone for a, one of these uh, sessions with the mosque in Gilroy around that time. I I don't know something did not fall through. What are we doing? Are, are, have we have we judged how the neighbors are? Yeah. So the uh, you know if you tour this property, uh, and I encourage all of you to uh, tour on Sunday between twelve and uh, uh, sorry ten and twelve. Uh, Sunday morning between 10 a.m. and 12 p.m. Please uh, come and, uh, you know, uh, tour the property. Uh, because it's 400 plus acres, uh, you don't have too many neighbors, <laughs> uh, you know. Um, and, uh, you know, this is, uh, 
it's uh, almost being in a you know a rural area and yet you are not very far from from town so uh, yeah there may be some opposition um, to some uses but you know uh, in the past we have worked very uh, closely with the you know uh, staff in the planning department and you know the rules that the you know uh, planners follow are uh, you know based on zoning based on traffic and things like that uh, you know sometimes neighbors do oppose uh, you having for example if you're trying to build a mosque there may be some opposition but you know uh, that that can be addressed so uh, i know uh, about the project in gilroy uh, yeah they had uh, i think some opposition from the neighbors and uh, so uh, it can have some impact, but here, you know, I don't think we'll be dealing with too many neighbors. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Uh, Zaza Haripa, the initiative on the effort. I have one question, you know, like uh, this new place. So we are going to cover Pleasant and Dublin, Livermore also like uh, San Ramon, right? So I know like the Livermore, so they are planning to acquire a new uh, place. I know they have a small major right now, so they are also having a fundraising, all this thing going on right now. I don't know what is the current status. So is there any plan that we can talk to them, they can join us so that that new facility can be used, you know, like uh, from multiple locations? Yes. Um... That's a good question. In fact, right now, there's a presentation going on at uh, Islamic Center of Livermore. Uh, just like when we started MCC, uh, our, our goal, uh, even with this project, is to have all of the Tri-Valley communities uh, work together. Uh, so uh, San Ramon, Livermore, and uh, you know Dublin, Pleasanton, uh, you know, all of the uh, uh, people in these communities, as well as the larger Bay Area community, uh, will benefit from this uh, particular property. So uh, we will uh, be working very closely with uh, Livermore and San Ramon, you know, uh, the masjids there. In fact, uh, we will uh, most likely have board members who manage this property, uh, you know, also be from Livermore and San Ramon. So. Uh, and uh, yes, I'm aware that they are looking for a property to purchase. Uh, you know, if it's possible to build something on this particular property, they might uh, consider that also. So, uh, you know, we are we are in communication with them. Yes. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, so you said the property has 400 plus acres, out of which 100 plus acres is the flat land. How would the 300 plus acres be put to use? So the 300 plus acres uh, you will see in the video uh, are rolling hills. And uh, there are certain uses of rolling hills also. You can have, for example, olive trees. You can have, uh, uh, you know, we could even have uh, part of the cemetery. Uh, you know, uh, be on the hillside. Uh, so, so there are uh, different types of uses for the rolling hills as well. But some of it will be open space. So, you know, uh, you, we could have hiking trails and, and so on. Uh, and eventually, if uh, the, uh, the county allows, you know, they may, if they allow residential development, then it's possible to also uh, perhaps have some uh, homes, you know, uh, on on uh, on top of the hills, I uh, toured the whole property uh, just recently, and uh, the views from the top are, are you know, incredible. So uh, I think we can. Uh, are there any other questions? We can still take more questions after the video, also. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. So my question is, uh, I heard from uh, Juma uh, Kutba uh, announcement that we may not be able to do anything for for nine years. So what's the plan uh, in the meantime? What are we going to do about construction and things like that? 
that was so, one question. And then another question is that we have raised the funds for the construction of facilities here in this facility, like basketball courts and you know uh, cafeteria and things like that. Are they going? Those funds will be used for the new facility, or we are continue to no. build those facilities here. Yeah. So uh, the first question regarding the uh, uses. So there are certain uses that are allowed immediately, and uh, inshallah we will. Uh, for example, like I mentioned earlier, a preschool, uh, an event center, and so on. So, so uh, the uses that are allowed immediately, you know, uh, we will start working on those. Uh, this property is under the Williamson Act, which uh, uh, says that uh, you need to have some, uh, you know, type of agriculture use, uh, you know, and that uh, has to be. Uh, in, uh, you know, um, so the agriculture use has to be in conjunction with whatever you're trying to do. And, um, you know, like, but there are certain uses still allowed. Uh, so the plan is, you know, this long term, uh, you know, uh, what should we say, you know, the uh, vision is for the long term. The mic is going out. Uh, let me use the other one. Yeah, uh, so the vision is for the long term. And, uh, you know, it, it will take some time to change the zoning. But, uh, inshallah, uh, once the zoning is changed, then the, the property will, worth, uh, will be worth several times what it is now. And, uh, you know, uh, so uh, we do realize, I mean, we're getting it. Uh, you know, 400 acres, uh, this is about $24,000 an acre. Uh, land uh, in uh, Livermore or Dublin is over $2 million an acre right now. So the reason it is uh, cheaper, uh, of course, is because it's zoned agriculture and is under the Williamson Act. So we're buying it cheap, but over time, inshallah, uh, it will be worth a lot more. And uh, your other question was, uh, uh, regarding the funds. Uh, so, no, we are not going to use any funds uh, that were donated for this building, uh, for this particular property. Uh, we uh, just borrowed uh, some funds for a deposit, which we are going to, uh, you know, replenish. Uh, so all the funds, you know, the 4 million, 50,000, uh, or actually, for, you know, the 4.3 million we're raising is, uh, you know, going to be a separate account. We are not going to use any of the funds that you donated uh, for construction. Okay. Yeah, let's, let's go through the video and then uh, we can take more questions. Yeah, so uh, this is the... Uh, you know, it's a drone video taken from the house that's on the property. On, on your left is a Highland Road. And then, uh, you know, there are, there are roads also on the property itself. You can uh, drive around. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, yes, you could see that road going up. Uh, and uh, there's a little pond uh, on, on the property. Uh, that has about a million gallons of water, according to the uh, owners. That is the house. Yeah, that's the main house on the property. And uh, right now that house is vacant. And uh, this video was taken just a few hours ago, so it's uh, very recent. So this is the house. Uh, it's... Uh, Three bedrooms, one and a half bath, you know, about uh, 2,200 square feet. Uh, those are some of the structures uh, on the property. And, uh, yeah, he's uh, going back to the house. Okay. I think that's it. So, uh, any any other questions?
Yeah, thank you so much, Zahir. Can you walk us through from the seller, the financing for the five years? What's the sustainable model in the first five years? How would we sustain? So uh, the seller financing, uh, as I mentioned earlier, is uh, at zero interest. Uh, and uh, what the seller requires is uh, some installment payments every month. So we'll be making a payment of 16667 a month for the five years, which will add up to, uh, you know, about uh, close to a million dollars. So the loan right uh, from the beginning is 4.95 million. Uh, after five years, it, uh, the remaining balance will be about 4 million. And uh, inshallah, we'll have, uh, you know, fundraising over the f next five years to, to pay that off. So, uh, you know, in the past, like when we purchased this building, uh, we also had about five years to pay off a loan and we, uh, we're able to do that ahead of time. So, so inshallah, we expect to uh, pay that loan off also, uh, you know, within the five years. Assalamu alaikum. Sorry. Uh, Tizakala for walking us through the presentation and the video. My question is more related to, uh, you said this is a multi-generational uh, opportunity that we get. Uh, when we are talking about multi-generational opportunity, there should be multi-generational involvement in both the decision-making uh, and futuristic plans for running the facility. And for, uh, so can you walk us through from a board of trustee perspective, board of directors perspective, what plans do we have besides involving community during uh, fundraising events? What plans do we have of involving the community, getting community inputs before such large decisions are made and then presented for fundraising? Uh, and also in the same line, what plans do we have of uh, futuristic plans for the board of trustees, for the board of directors? How do we plan to involve the next generation, the future generations uh, in, in the coming years and decades? Yeah, that's a, that's a very good question. Um, we have from the beginning uh, tried to focus on, on the youth and uh, we have, uh, uh, as you know, several programs at MCC that uh, focus on uh, you know our uh, our kids uh, so uh, as far as the board of trustees uh, are concerned you know uh, we basically have uh, the vision for the future for you know with this property and we always do you know when we are making large decisions we uh, do surveys uh, you know i don't know if you've participated in some of our surveys but we we do surveys to uh, get uh, the community's input you know on what uh, you know the community wants we were totally driven by the community not you know the board of trustees or board of directors don't make independent decisions you know we look at what the community needs and then uh, follow uh, you know uh, those requirements so uh, for this project i mean there will be a lot of input from the community there'll be a lot of uh, uh, surveys there'll be uh, you know meetings uh, uh, to get everybody's input including input from the kids uh, you know on on what they need uh, you know uh, some of the sport facilities that the kids have been asking for uh, you know, uh, could be uh, implemented at this site. So, uh, yeah, MCC uh, has always, uh, you know, uh, look for your feedback and your opinions. You know, you can submit uh, your feedback at any time through our website also. Uh, so please uh, let us know, you know, either individually or collectively, you know, uh, what uh, you would like to see. Uh, so we have a question on the lady's side, uh, brother. Uh, if, if we could uh, take a question from this side. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Asalaamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Asalaam. Um, I had a, a, a couple of questions and uh, concerns. And um, the first one was that seeing as we're in the times that we're living right now with climate change and seeing that we're in a place that has a limited supply of water 
Have there been um, evaluations to see what the projections are as to what to make sure that we would have an adequate supply of water? What is the fire risk like in a place like this? Just since it's such a large future plan. And uh, the other comment and question was, since you're starting something that's totally new, it's an opportunity to create, you know, create a really environmentally friendly project that can act as kind of a beacon mm. for neighboring areas. So has there been some uh, thought about creating an environmentally sound building of that type? Uh, so let me answer your question about the water. Um, so one of the things that uh, we are doing is uh, what's known as an environmental site assessment. You know, that process has already started. Um, uh, we have uh, Brother Mahbul Khader, who's uh, an environmental engineer uh, with NPRO Solutions. So he's doing a very thorough job evaluating everything, including the uh, water, uh, the availability of water on the site. So fortunately, uh, there are multiple wells. Uh, there's water, uh, you know, there, there are water pipes, there's a water tank, and, uh, you know, there there. Uh, part of the property is uh, used for cattle grazing right now. It's rented, you know, uh, for cattle grazing, and there's water for the cattle uh, in about seven different locations. Uh, so there's more than enough water, uh, you know, from the, you know, well water. Uh, and uh, in the future, at some point, you know, uh, as uh, development occurs, uh, then, uh, you know, uh, city water connections, uh, you know, uh, would, would happen. But, but that's, you know, over a period of several years. But right now, there's more than enough water on, on the site. Uh, you know, there are two houses that have uh, uh, wells, and, uh, you know, there's water from that. And like I said, there's also a very large uh, storage tank. As far as any kind of development, uh, you know, right now, we're, we're just focused on acquiring the land. Uh, we certainly will, uh, you know, encourage uh, input from the community, you know, from people like you who can provide us guidance on environmentally friendly and, uh, you know, um, uh, the type of construction that, uh, you know, will, will uh, be an example for other communities. Uh, so any type of future construction, we certainly will welcome any input, you know, uh, from all of you. Okay, I think we had a question on this side. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. Uh, Zerwai, since it's just open land and not really much around, any uh, safety, security concerns that we have? If so, what would be the measures on that? Um, as far as uh, safety concerns, you know, it's it's just like uh, you know any other rural uh, property. Uh, you know, we certainly would uh, install uh, you know cameras and and so on around uh, the house and uh, you know any other uh, part of the property. But most of it is vacant land. As you know, so uh, we just have, and and uh, majority of it is fenced because of the cattle. You don't want the cattle to get out on the streets. So uh, you know, I don't think there's any significant, you know, security issue. Uh, but certainly, like with any other area, you know, we will take our precautions. Yeah. Yeah. Jazakallah, Zahir Bhai, for a nice presentation and all the efforts. So I want to extend what Anis Bhai was asking. There is a, a, such a massive decision like $9.5 million involved from the beginning, right? And nine, then- Nine yeah, million. Nine million. And then we are pretty much committing the community to raise over a million dollar per year, right? So community will have to raise, I don't know how much funds we will be raising, maybe $1.5 million as a donations, mm -hmm. but we, the community is committing $7.5 million, let's say, for next 10 years. And as far as I understand, I was not here for Juma. I think for next nine years, nothing can be done here, right? And there are so many unknowns, like we don't know what permits we will get. And knowing, like someone mentioned about the 
permit issues at the uh, Gilroy, but we had the issues, and you dealt with that, extending and buying the land for our Livermore Cemetery, right? So did we consider all those factors, or so we are just Absolutely. committing $9 million for the community for next nine years, right? And we don't know what these properties will be used. Because as far as I know, right now, only the land, whatever the constructed area we have, we can start only the daycare or some events, right? So that's yes. my question. So, uh, you know, like, like we said earlier, uh, this, this property is, uh, you know, multi-generational. I mean, if you think about your kids growing up and, uh, you know, their kids, and, uh, you know, uh, at that time, uh, what the land prices will be, what uh, the property values will be, and, and, and so on. Uh, so there are people in the community who are 100% committed to this uh, project, okay? Because we see the vision. You know, when we are purchasing this building, you know, uh, there were some people who said, uh, well, why do you need such a big building? You know, 43,000 square feet on five acres, uh, you know, over 300 parking spaces. But look at where we are today. You know, uh, in, in just about 13 years, we have outgrown this building, right? So we have to plan for the future. And uh, yes, it does take, uh, you know, funds. It does take uh, some effort. But Alhamdulillah, you know, the, the community uh, has uh, grown so much, uh, you know, especially in the Tri-Valley. Uh, like our kids, a lot of us have adult kids who are now working, you know, who are uh, also uh, contributing. You know, I, I talked to one young gentleman today after Juma, and, uh, you know, uh, he's probably 30 years old. He said, I will be, you know, 100% behind this project. Let me know what I can donate. So, you know, the young people who are working and uh, who, who can see this vision uh, will, will, will certainly, uh, I think, uh, be very, uh, I mean, and they are excited about the, the, the uh, future potential with this project. I mean, we have to realize that land is something that always goes up in value. I mean, we could even buy this, and if, if we don't want it in the future, we could sell it for a much higher price. Uh, you know, even today, you know, uh, we've done some analysis, and the property is worth over $12 million. You're talking about 400 acres, okay? Uh, so 400 acres for 24,000 an acre uh, is, uh, you know, not something that you find uh, you know, very often. So, yeah, we are making a commitment, but, uh, the, you know, the board of trustees and the board of directors feel very confident that, uh, you know, we will have the community support, and uh, we are also committing ourselves. Every uh, board member is also donating in, in, in a large amount. You know, I already mentioned, uh, you know, around about $1.3 million that just the board members are donating towards this. Uh, no, but why would we not? Yeah, yeah. No, we, we always uh, see. So this is just from our community, right? So when you add San Ramon, Danville, you know, those areas plus Livermore, uh, you know, uh, and then we, uh, in, in the past, when we were buying this building, we had a gentleman from uh, South Bay uh, give us $500,000, you know, in, in, in Harze Hasna. So there, there are people uh, all over the Bay Area who will, who will support this uh, project, inshallah. Uh, so, uh, and it, it, will, it should not affect anything else that we are doing, you know, uh, because this is going to be independent. Any questions from this side? Oh, okay. Almost. Alaikum, uh, almost makrib. I have two quick questions. The first one is one of the slides you show about the donation, it has some numbers. Does it mean that those are the only donation amount you're looking for, or anyone can donate whatever they want to? 
That was my first question. The second question, could you please clarify the short-term plan after this land is purchased uh, in the from now to the next nine years? Will mm. anything happen or anything is to be expected after nine years? Thank you. Yes, I can. Yeah, so regarding donations, uh, Sister, uh, yeah, well, of course, we are accepting any amount uh, in donations. And uh, we should have probably left that slide up. But, uh, you know, you can donate uh, through MCC East Bay slash Livermore. Uh, we have created a special uh, link for this project. So uh, any amount, of course, is, uh, is welcome. And uh, this, we believe, is you know, uh, for the future generations, you know, because, you know, what we're doing now will uh, really benefit a lot of our kids and, and their kids. Uh, so, uh, and then you had a second question, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, the nine years, yeah. So, uh, as soon as we acquire the land, uh, we are going to look at all allowed uses uh, and then uh, get the community's input uh, and uh, start planning for construction. For example, if a preschool is allowed, uh, we want to have an Islamic preschool. Uh, we've had several, uh, you know, families asking, you know, for uh, space for an Islamic preschool. So we'd want to, uh, you know, uh, work on that. And then uh, an event center is, is something also that is uh, an allowed use and inshallah, We'll uh, work on that. Uh, so we will uh, get communities' input on everything, but uh, the goal is uh, first to acquire the land, and then we can start working on on each of the uh, uh, you know uh, allowed uses.